everyone. Welcome to Make Moments Matter, a music education podcast, where I share lesson ideas, songs, games, and inspiring things for your elementary music classroom. My name is David Rao, and I am the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. This episode of the podcast is a replay containing the audio version of a Musical Mondays live video. If you're not familiar with Musical Mondays, every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I go live on Facebook and Instagram to share about the lessons that I'm using in class with my students. I give a recap of my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons and then do a deep dive about one grade level and share the books, instruments, songs, and process that I use to teach the lesson to kids. This podcast episode contains all the audio from the Musical Mondays video, but if you'd like to see a replay of the video itself, you can find a link to the archived video on YouTube when you click the link in the notes for this episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Here's the show. Hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and a variety of other platforms when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, Tonight I'm really excited to be sharing about my most recent concert, which uh, was with first grade. It was all about the farm, everything farm themed. Um, I did it with first grade. I'm sure you could take this idea and run with it and go to a variety of different grade levels on on how you... Um, slant things, but I'm going to share just sort of all the songs I used and some of the extras and things that go along with that um, in just a second. So a couple quick things. If you hear me talk about a book, a song, a resource, something you're interested in, um, I have a whole page dedicated on my blog to the links and things that I share in these videos. So like for this one, all the songs, I found them online, a version of them, and I put a link to the written notation, a place where you can find more information. That's all on the links page. If you go to my blog, makemomentsmatter.org, you can click on the video tab to find that, or just wherever you're watching, listening to this, there should be um, a direct link at the bottom of the caption. Okay, also, um, if you want to join the Facebook group, there's a Facebook group called Every Moment Matters, music education community, where you can continue the conversation, ask more questions, meet people. It's a great place to uh, learn and um, hear more. Okay, and one more thing, uh, not this weekend, but the weekend after April 15th, I'm going to be at Fayetteville, Arkansas. I'm going to be with the uh, Northwest um, Arkansas um, Travelers ORF chapter. So if you're in the Fayetteville area or around there and you want to come join us, it's going to be a great time. You can find a link to that on my blog or um, you can also find it on my Facebook page. I just made an event for it just yesterday or a couple days ago. Check that out. If you're interested in a live workshop, it should be great. Okay, so um, the plan tonight, I'm going to talk about this most recent concert, what I did. It's a first, well, I did it with first grade. You could do it with kinder. You could do it with second, depending on what you want to do with it. I'm going to talk about a lot of, well, all the songs is sort of how I adapted them and changed them. Um, My goal for these primary younger concerts is to just take songs that we're already doing in the classroom and sort of soup them up, change them a little bit, make them a little bit more interesting to parents and repackage them basically for um, the concert. But I don't want to have to like teach anything new. Like I want to just take the things that I'm already teaching in my classroom and figure out a way to share those. So that's sort of what I did for this concert. I want to share with you how I changed some of these things. Because some of those songs we use in our classroom are like 20 seconds long. So how do you like turn that into like a featured song you can share with parents? That's sort of what I'm going to share with you tonight. So um, all these songs are farm themed, um, which uh, for me is an easy, easy thing to do to pull those songs out and use them at a concert because so many songs in our primary um, grades sequence are like farm or animal or or themed around that. Um, There are so many things you can pull and use. So um, this was really easy to take things that we had already learned. I didn't have to spend a lot of time reteaching or doing anything like that. And basically just throughout the year, I taught a bunch of these songs. And when it came time for the concert, I said like, hey, remember we learned this one in October. We remember this blah, blah, blah. And so all of the songs that we're using are curricular. They're on theme with the curriculum, but they also can be souped up to use for this concert. So Let me just do a quick rundown of all the songs we did, and then I'll talk about each one and sort of how I changed it, how I adapted it. Then I'll talk a little bit about costumes, uh, posters, extras, things like that. Um, So the songs that I use, and like I said, on the links page, if you want a direct link to find like a copy of this online, I I found all of those on uh, a line and I put them 
on the links page. So if you're interested, they're there. Uh, the songs I did are Down on Grandpa's Farm, Sweetly Sings the Donkey, Five Little Ducks, Hunt the Cattle, Come Back Home My Little Chicks, Old MacDonald, Farmer Brown's Cow, and Bingo. So um, when we came in, we started with the song Down on Grandpa's Farm. I did something that I was sure would flop, but it totally didn't. Um, we, the week leading up to a concert, I see all of that grade level for basically four days, four days of practice. So uh, like Monday, like if it's a Thursday concert, I the previous Friday, I get a whole grade. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the whole grade during specials. And then on Thursday during our specials time, we share with the school. It's like an all-school assembly. And then that night is the concert. So um, on the very first day, I just try and get them all in. We sing through all our songs, try and do it a couple times, maybe up, down, get used to it. They get used to hearing one another. Um, as we go, we get better and better and better. And so with this first song, I was like, okay, this is crazy. They've never done a concert. They've never been on risers, but they know the song so well. And the song is called Down on Grandpa's Farm. And there's a, the, the chorus goes like, we're on our way, we're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's Farm. We're on our way, we're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's Farm. Like that, like that's the song. And I was like, this might be crazy, but what if we sang this as we were walking into the gym? So we did. And, and I tried it in rehearsal a couple times and it worked. So what we did was as we, we walked in, we basically did a circle around the parents. And then when we came back to the stage, they went up the steps, found their spot on the risers. And the whole time we were singing, I was sure it wouldn't work. It worked so well. It was so much fun. Um, I felt like P Pied Piper, like playing the ukulele and walking and they were singing. It was so cool. Anyway, so we came in singing basically that song. Um, the chorus is, we're on our way. We're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's farm. We walked and we sang that. And then on the verse, I turned around and said to the first guys, I was like, tell them the one about the cow. And then we all stopped. They turned and found an audience member, the closest one. They went down on Grandpa's farm. There was a little brown cow. Down on Grandpa's farm, there was a little brown cow. The cow, it made a sound like this. Moo. The cow, it made a sound like this. Moo. And then we're back to walking and then we would walk. So it was like walk during the chorus. We did the chorus. We did it like twice every time we did it. We stopped, we'd sing a verse, do the chorus. It took uh, three verses and we did brown cow, um, little red hen and um, dirty pig. Uh, li dirty little pig or whatever. I don't remember exactly what we said. Um, and, and we walked in. It was super cute, super fun. They made it to their spots on the risers. It was great. I don't know how it worked, but it worked. It was fun. Um, so that was how we entered the uh, entered the gym. Then we did this song called Sweetly Sings the Donkey, which again, is like, how do you take these 20 second songs and turn it into something to share in a concert? So the song, if you're not familiar, is like, Sweetly Sings the Donkey at the Break of Day. If you do not feed him, this is what he'll say. Hee-haw, 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 hee-haw. Like, that's the song, okay? So... And that's the whole song. It's like, what do we do? So I, I started out with um, basically in between each song, I didn't have speaking parts. I don't feel like that's developmentally appropriate for kindergarten, first or second grade. I have so many students who are like, I have stage fright. I'm like, you're a first grader. You've never done a, why do you have stage fright? Um, and so I don't do speaking parts with younger grades just because it's so much more work for me. Um, it adds so much pressure for kids. Um, it adds so much more pressure for homeroom teachers to like me to like ask them, like, can you practice these lines? It's just so much more. It adds so much more stress. Um, and we don't need that in these younger grade concerts. I want them to leave being like, this was so much fun. We loved it. We were, you know, so instead I took on all the speaking, um, parts. So we walked in, sing down on grandpa's farm in between that and the next song i said oh these junior farmers they've been doing great they're practicing they're ready for the co they're ready to take on the farm anything that we need them to do they're doing great except uh-oh and i train the kids anytime i say uh-oh they all turn to me and go what and so it's like uh-oh what and i was like someone forgot to feed the donkey and they were all like oh no okay so like two reasons we did this and this was like our clue in between every song one Parents thought it was hilarious that like every time I'd say, uh oh, they'd all go, what? And then it'd be like, somebody, blah, 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 blah. Oh, no. So like parents thought it was cute. It was a little device to like, uh, you know, create some repetition. But also it clued in the kids like, what's the next song? 
So they didn't have to try and remember. It was just like, I would give them the clue. Like, uh-oh, what? Uh, Farmer Brown needs some help with old brown cow. She's sick again. Oh, no. Or like, uh-oh, what? The ducks have gone missing. Oh, no. You know, so like they knew what the next song was. It gave them the clue, but also parents loved it. It, it was like the connective tissue between each song. So the next song, Sweetly Sings the Donkey, is... You know, oh, someone forgot to feed the donkey. Oh, no. So I sit down, I start playing the piano, and I go, oh, one morning there was a little donkey, and he woke up and was very hungry. So he sang this song. We sang it once. I moved up a half step on the piano, and I said, and in between them singing the little 20-second song about the donkey who's hungry, well, the farmer, he had set some alarms, but he had hit the snooze button, and he was asleep in bed, and the donkey thought, maybe I'll sing a little bit louder. And that'll wake the farmer up. Bum, ba, dum, bum, bum, bum. And so he sang it again, just a tiny bit louder. Every time I'd move up a half step, I would add more to the story. Oh, the farmer's awake, but he's got to put on his boots. He's got to find his hat. He's got to get his overalls. He's taking too long. And we'd sing the song again a little bit louder. Oh, the farmer came out. What did he do first? Oh, he fed the chickens. Can you believe it? And then he went and fed the horses. Doesn't he know who's most important? And then we'd sing again about the donkey who was very hungry. Every time getting louder and louder and louder. Eventually, they are very, very loud. Um, it's very, it's cute. It's funny. And then the farmer feeds a donkey and we like tone it down and sing it just sort of a normal dynamic. And it was very fun. It, it took this 20 second song, made it like, you know, two minutes long instead. Um, also let them play with dynamics uh, and it added more drama to the story. So a super fun version of that song. The next song is Five Little Ducks. If you're familiar with that one, if uh, great. If not, it goes... Five little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said quack, 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 but only four little ducks came back. So every time we did it, and there are different versions of that, every time we did it, you know, one duck would go missing, something would happen, we would lose a duck along in the process, which is like no good, but... um between each verse, I go, wait, four ducks? What happened to that other duck? We sing the four, it turns into three. Three ducks? What's happening to these ducks? You know, every time we get down, the my favorite part was, and nobody blew this. It, it worked so well. My favorite part was to get down to one little duck went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 quack. And they all went silent and they all go. Looking around. Mama Duck said, quack, 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 quack. All silence. They all just are looking. And I like have a cue of like, mom. And they like would hear my breath and move on. And so then, but no more little ducks came back. And there went, no little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama Duck said, quack, 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 quack. And all of the little ducks came. So we sing the version where the ducks return. There is a version where the ducks just don't <coughs> return. It's like a, it's like a a, a a story about you know oh the ducks they grow up and they go. <laughs> we didn't do that version. We did uh, the happy version. Anyway, that was all up on the risers. Then we came out into the gym, and each class had their own little square where they stood. Uh, we did a song called "Hunt the Cattle," which goes. Wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and find the cattle. Wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and find the cows. And then the other kids sing, The cows are lost. The sun is warm. I think I'll wait till they come home. Now I'll go to sleep. It's this cute little thing with, like, on each thing you put down one knee, put down. The cows are lost. One knee goes down. The sun is warm. Another knee goes down. I think I'll wait. An elbow goes down. Till they come home. And their elbows go down. Now I'll go to sleep. And they all pretended to sleep. So I sang the first part. Wake up, you sleepy heads and go. They all woke up as a whole grade level. They sang and went back to sleep. I said, oh no, Miss Allison's class. Miss Allison's class, I need your help. One class stood up. And then they sang the call, wake up, you sleepy heads, for another animal. The rest of the grade level woke up, sang, went back to sleep. I said, Miss Allison's class, your ver it didn't work. And they went, oh, well, and went back to sleep. I went basically class by class. I let each one be featured. I let each one be like the adult, wake up, you sleepy heads. And it never would the kids stay awake. As we're doing this, I was like, hey, parents, you might want to listen closely to this part. It might become important. At the end... 
Um, all the kids were asleep. I was like, I don't know. Something's not working. I bet if you, all you adults would help me sing this song, it would wake up these kids. And so all the adult, adults in the audience sang, wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and find. And we, and eventually the kids, I was like, will you help us now? They're like, yes, we'll help. So that like, again, this tiny little short story, we just developed it a little bit and made it something that was became interactive between the classes and then between the audience and the kids. Super fun. The next song, we did a song called Come Back Home, My Little Chicks. And again, this is a call and response thing um, where two different characters sing at one another, chicks and a hen. So it goes, come back home, my little chicks. We won't come. Why not? We're afraid. Of what? Of the wolf. Where's he hiding? In the woods. What's he doing? Washing. What's he drying his face on? On the kitty cat's tail. And it's a cute little song. Usually it, there's a chase game that involved if we're doing it in the classroom. So to make it uh, work for our big concert, um, we had, I, I first did the mama hen part and all the kids were the chicks. And then I had half the class be the hen or half the grade level be hens, half the class, be, half the grade level be chicks. And they went back and forth and back and forth. Um, and then again, I had the audience participate. They got to do the chick part this time. It was a very cute. We had just added some simple actions. Come back home, my little chicks. We won't come. Why not? We're afraid. Of what? Of the wolf. Where's he hiding? In the wood. You know, so just very, very simple things, but it's things that the kids could pick up and the audience could as well. We went back up to the risers and we were going to sing Old MacDonald. I taught this song and I taught like 10 different animal options. We went through all the basics, cow, sheep, duck, hen, blah, 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 all these things. Um, and I taught a bunch of different versions as we were learning the song throughout the year. Um, and so for the concert, I had these very cool posters um, made many, many, many years ago. Um, and basically I just found a clip art set that I really like of farm animals. Um, and I blew them up to poster size. It's just clip art. Um, and there's this cool website called Block Posters. And I think, I think it's just blockposters.com. But if you look really carefully, um, you'll notice this is not just a poster. It is just basic eight and a half by 11 paper. So block posters, what they do is they take any image and they break it up into, do you want it into four? Do you want it um, uh, into, you know, do you want four pages? Do you want six pages? And they make whatever size you want. Um, I think it's free. I'm pretty sure it's free. Um, and then they, you can download a PDF, print it out. And basically what I did was I just taped it all together, which you can maybe see on the back. It's all just taped together. And then I ran it through our laminator. So um, what I did was outside as sort of a um, decoration, I put up a, a bunch of pictures of animals. And then um, I gave parents a QR code as they're sitting there waiting that says scan here to help us decide what to sing at Old McDonald. So I had like all those 10 options and I let parents decide they got to choose our final three things. So kids all along, I was like, you got to be ready no matter what. What if they say duck? What are you going to sing? Quack, quack, quack. You know, what if they say old, on Old McDonald's farm they had a rabbit? What sound am I going to make? Like we had actions for any option. And then the top three parent responses um, became our final song. So again, it was fun. Parents, it felt interactive. It was exciting for the student uh, performance for our school, for like our assembly. I sent out the QR code and every other classroom in the school grabbed their iPads and they all got a vote as well. So that was like student, the whole school population got to choose what our final verses were, which again was super fun for them and felt interactive. But like old McDonald can be like, tired of this song you know like it yeah kids like it but like you can get tired of it so this was fun because like i got to teach kids a bunch of different options they had to be ready for anything and then i didn't tell them what the final version was until we were singing it bum, bum, i'm vamping on the piano bum, 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 bum. the next parent choice is dun, 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 a pig oh, bum, ba, da, bum, old mcdonald and the kids just went with it and it was so cool to see them just in the moment just adapt to whatever animal came next um the qr voting worked really well what did i do i just did a google form 
um, and I listed the options. There was only one question on the form, which animal, what's your number one animal that you want to hear? I let parents see the responses in like a pie chart when the an answers came in. So they knew what the answers were. They knew I wasn't like lying. I hadn't like just chosen my favorites and like given them the idea that maybe they could give. No, like they really were getting to vote there, which was fun. Um, <clears throat> and then what they came up with was our final song. Um, then we did a song called Farmer Brown's Cow. Uh, which goes, Farmer Brown had a cow, had a cow, had a cow. She got sick, I don't know how. All she said was moo. Hey, 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 wouldn't you say that would make it go away? Hey, 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 wouldn't you say that's all for today? The idea being that there's this cow who's sick. She can't tell us what the problem is because she speaks cow, not English. And so she can't tell us what the problem is. But if you watch her action, she's like, moo, moo. <sighs> And so I, I teach this with a puppet where there's like an actual cow like as a part of the story. But in the song, kids are like, you know, we don't know. She All she says is moo. Well, the idea is that the farmers tried everything he can. So other animals from the barnyard are, are going to come and try to uh, help out the cow. They don't speak cow either, but they're going to try their best. So uh, what I did was we, we learned the main verse. Farmer Brown had a cat like that original verse. And then when I teach the song in the class, we go through a bunch of different options of animals and what they could bring. But what I did for the final concert was each homeroom, and there were four in this in this concert, each homeroom got their own um, animal and like remedy to sing about. So one class sang, her friend the pig brought some grain, brought some grain, brought some grain to see if that would help her brain. All she said was moo. And then the whole grade level got to sing the chorus. Hey, 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 wouldn't you say that would make it go? The next class sang, her friend the horse brought pumpkin pie, pumpkin pie, pumpkin pie to see if that would help her eye. All she said was moo. And then we all sing the chorus together. Her friend the duck brought some bread for her head. Her friend the sheep brought scrambled eggs for her legs. Um, I tried to not pair a food with an ant. So I didn't have like the hen bring scrambled eggs because that was weird. Um, I, did, <laughs> I didn't have like the pig bring bacon or whatever. You know, like I had the animals like planned out. But like, again, it was a moment to like feature each class. So each one got their own animal. I'm not making sure that all kids have to know all the verses, but like each class got their own feature moment, which was fun. Parents love that. I love that. And then um, we all sang the chorus together and then sang together at the end. And then the last song was Bingo, uh, which is another fan favorite. And so with Bingo, um, the first time, you know, we sing all normal. Um, and then we, uh, we take out the letter B and we clap. So I N G O. I and right and the second time I switch to this time do pat NGO NGO and then the next time we do uh, pops GO GO and then the next time we do clicks O O and then they did stomps all stomping and it was super fun we invited the audience to sing along with us at the end Again, between each song, I would say, uh, you know, like, oh, these farmers, they've got it all under control. They helped us find those dogs, ducks, except, uh-oh, what? And look, all the kids would go, what? And I was like, oh, no, the cattle are missing now. And they'd go, oh, no. And so that sort of helped to connect everything together. Um, and it was a super fun moment. What did kids wear? Let's talk about costumes. So what did kids wear? I, I, I first started teaching at a, a Title I school, a school where um, a lot of the families in my school community just didn't have money to go out and buy costumes or buy things. And all throughout the rest of my career, I've had this mentality of give kids options, give family options, because some families may say like, I wanna go out and buy a crazy costume. And some families are like, we don't have the budget for that right now. Um, so I want to be sensitive to that, but also I want to give kids freedom and options. So in all of my concerts, I give kids ideas of you could wear this, you could wear this, you could wear this. So for this concert, I said, you could come dressed as a barnyard animal. Any animal you think might be on a farm. Could it be a sheep? Yes. Could it be a pig? Yes. Could it be a duck? Yes. Could it be an alligator? No, because we don't have those on farms. Could it be a, a Pikachu? No, because those are not on farms. Could it be a llama? Sure. Could it be a cow? Yes. Could it be um, an aardvark? 
Pro probably not, right? So giving kids options of what they could wear. You could also come dressed as a farmer. Wear some overalls, wear some gingham, wear some flannel, wear whatever, wear a cool uh, hat, wear a, you know, whatever you think a farmer might wear. I gave kids that option too. I also said, if you have a shirt with a picture of an animal that you think would be on a farm. That's great because then they don't have to necessarily come dressed as the animal. Maybe they have like a cool shirt with like a picture of a cow on the front. Cool. You can go ahead and wear that. Um, so I, I kept giving options like that. If you have, and I said in the end, if you don't have any of that stuff and you just want to wear our school spirit thing, cool, because I know every kid is given a t-shirt by the PTO at the beginning of the school year. So I know they have that. Um, I said, or bright colors or what, you know, like I, I genuinely don't care what kids wear um, as long as they don't come dressed as something completely, you know, like come as an alien, like that'd be weird. But um, I had kids come in all different cool manner of cool costumes. I had one kid come in a full duck costume. I had one kid come that like he was a tractor. I don't know how or where that came from, but I love that. Um, I had a lot of kids dressed in gingham and overalls. I had a lot of kids wearing shirts that like, um, had pictures of animals. I had one girl wear all pink and then her mom had crocheted like a pig nose and pig ears. Really cute. So I like giving parents and kids those options. Um, what did I wear? Well, for the afternoon performance, um, I wore this cool hat that looks like I have a cow on my head. Kids love that. I tried to track this one down. I bought it at like a novelty store or something like 15 years ago. I don't know where you, I tried finding it online. I couldn't find it. And then uh, for the evening performance, I wore this. I also wore um, a plaid, a red plaid shirt and like jean material stuff so that like I like looked farmery. Whatever. Like I grew up on a farm. There is no farmer costume. We do not wear gam and overalls every day and whatever like my dad would show up in like a t-shirt jeans and like a baseball cap like that is the most normal but anyway whatever um so i wore this chicken hat and kids really liked it um okay i did find this online and i put a link to that in the links page if you're interested um okay so the that's my sort of quick recap of all the things i did in this concert if you have questions if you have thoughts if you have ideas um, if you want to learn more, please leave a comment or shoot me an email. My email is makemomentsmatter at gmail.com. One other thing that I've done is I've done away with um, concert programs. Now I do a QR code where parents can go and download it if they want um, with a PDF version of that so that parents can have an option for that. But I'm past the days of, I'm going to print out 200 and I hope that's enough. And if it's not, an, you know, like I send it to them the day before in an email, I have a QR code the night of, um, all of those things so that parents can get a copy of that if they want. Um, but also like if they don't want it, they don't have to have it. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I did at this show that I should tell you about. Um, yeah. Oh, and for decoration, then these posters that I had made that I used when I taught Old McDonald, these went up around the um, the stage so that, again, parents could sort of see what their options were when they did the QR voting for Old McDonald. Um, and that was like my decoration for the concert. I don't do a lot of decoration because I don't know the time. It's really not my talent. And also it's in our active gym. So it would have to be done like the day of the show in between end of school and the concert. And that's a window where a lot of other stuff has to happen and I don't have the time. So um, I, it was uh, sort of basic, but again, we had so much fun. Kids had so much fun. I don't stress about the decor all that much. All right, again, if you have questions, if you have thoughts, if you have ideas, please leave a comment or please reach out to me. I'd love to tell you more. Um, Otherwise, I will see you all next week. Thanks so much for coming along. And think about if you're in the Fayetteville area, come join us at the Northwest Arkansas Travelers Orf Chapter. That's in a week and a half on um, April 15th. I hope you'll join us for our live workshop in Fayetteville. It should be super duper fun. Okay, everyone. Thanks so much for coming along with me tonight. I hope this was helpful and gave you some ideas. I'll see you all next week. Bye, everyone.